Let me start with a simple question. What if your camera could decide when to turn something on? Previously, we controlled this LED through a graphical user interface, but today the LED will react automatically based on what the camera sees. By the end of this video, you will know how to detect any object from this entire list. But the real magic happens when we bring in YOLO. We are creating a smart two-zone system, normal and prohibited. Before we get started, I want to give a huge shout out to Mishnology for sending over the RDK X5 developer kit. If you haven't checked them out yet, take a minute and visit their website at Mishnology.com. They have an amazing lineup of embedded systems, development boards, IoT solutions, and so many cool products that makers, engineers, and hobbyists will love. Right now, I'm on the desktop, just like in the previous video. I can control everything directly on the RDK X5 using a keyboard and mouse but today let's make things a little more interesting instead of sitting in front of the board why not access it directly from a laptop so let's begin by doing the most important thing enabling ssh and vnc because before we can control the rdk x5 from our laptop we need a secure and reliable way to access it remotely let's set that up first simply right click anywhere on the desktop and select open terminal here now type this command Go to interface options and here you have three choices. You can enable only SSH, which gives you remote command line access, or you can enable only VNC, which gives you a full graphical desktop remotely, or my personal recommendation, you can enable both. I have both enabled for a reason. When you are using VNC, you can control the desktop just like you are sitting in front of the RDK X5, but you can't directly download files or folders from the device to your laptop Maybe there's some hidden workaround, I am not sure, but I haven't found one that works smoothly. And that's exactly where SSH becomes incredibly powerful. Through SSH, you can transfer any file or folder from the RDK X5 to your laptop in just a few seconds. And don't worry, I am going to show you the full practical demo later in this video. For now, go ahead and enable both options. As you can see, I already have SSH enabled and you will enable VNC the exact same way. And with that, we are done with the RDK X5 side of the setup. Now on the laptop side, head over to the official Mobex term website and download the portable edition of the software. It's lightweight, it runs without installation and it gives you everything you need. SH, VNC, SFTP and more all in one place. Now let's go ahead and click on VNC. Before connecting, make sure both your laptop and the RDK X5 are on the same Wi-Fi network or connected to the same router. This is important. Otherwise, they simply won't see each other. Next, you will need the IP address of your RDK X5. If you don't already know it, don't worry. There's an easy way to find it. Just open the command prompt on your laptop and type. This command will show you a list of all the devices currently connected to your network along with their IP addresses. Look through the list, find the one that matches your RDK X5, and that's the address you need. Simply enter that IP address into the VNC window and press enter. And just like that, within a second, you'll be connected to the RDK X5's desktop. No complicated networking, no technical jargon, it just works. I already have the RDK stereo camera module connected to the RDK X5 board. What this stereo camera actually is, its complete specifications and how to connect it properly to the RDK X5. I've already covered all of that in my getting started video. I've also connected the LED to pin 37. And if you want to learn how to control GPIO pins on the RDK X5, I explained everything in detail in my second video. I'll place the links to both of those videos down in the description so you can easily check them out if you need a refresher. With that said, our entire setup is now ready to go. While you're still on the desktop, go ahead and open the file system from here. Navigate to the app folder and then open the pydev underscore demo directory. Inside this folder, you will notice there are a lot of example projects, everything from simple test to real-time video streaming demos. For our work, we are interested in the third folder, the one designed specifically for real-time streaming. So let's open that. Now, here's the interesting part. If you try to open this Python file and run it directly from the interface, it won't work. Let me show you. As you can see, there's no live video feed, no camera output, nothing happening. That's because this example must be executed through the terminal. 
Right click anywhere inside the folder and select open terminal here. This will open a terminal window already pointed to the correct directory so we don't need to type any long paths. Now to run this file, simply enter this command sudo python3 mypi underscore camera dot pi hit enter and now you will get proper real-time video streaming from the rdk camera module exactly the way this example is intended to run this code is capable of detecting all the objects listed inside the coco.names file for example since i am currently in front of the camera its printing person is in the picture and now if i hold a keyboard in front of it the detection changes and it starts printing keyboard and you can try this with anything place different objects in front of the camera and you will see the detections update in real time but my goal here is a little different i want the led to turn on only when a specific object appears for example i want the led to turn on only when the camera detects a person if it detects anything else keyboard cup bottle whatever the led should remain off so i have modified the original code and made it much more user friendly now all you have to do is type the name of the object you want to trigger the led that's it right now i have set it to person which means the led will turn on only when a human is detected first we will test it with a person and after that we will test it again using car to show how easily you can switch objects and change the behavior let's go ahead and run this code As you can see, the LED is currently off because there is no one in front of the camera. Now watch this. The moment I step into the frame, the LED instantly turns on. This is mind-blowing. Real-time object detection, controlling physical hardware, all happening directly on the RDK X5. Now let's take it one step further and test it with car. I have changed the target object from person to car and look at this even though i am right here in the frame the led does not turn on anymore it will only turn on when the camera detects a car this level of precision is absolutely amazing and that's not all i have written several more examples that you can try out yourself all these additional codes are available on my patreon and you will find the link in the description below you will also find multiple yolo related samples inside the rdk x5 open the sixth folder this example detects objects inside a static image called kite.jpg. When I ran the script, it produced this output image and just look at the accuracy. YOLO v3 has identified all the objects with impressive confidence. Now, if you have followed my earlier work, you will remember that I once used YOLO v3 with the ESP32 camera module. And on top of that, I built a complete virtual laser security system using Python, OpenCV and MediaPipe pose landmarks. MediaPipe gives you 33 highly accurate body landmarks and by tracking even a single one like landmark 31 which we used last time i was able to detect when someone crossed a line or entered a restricted zone with insane accuracy and now i have implemented that same concept on the rdk x5 as well think of this line on the screen as our virtual laser and the best part you are not limited to a straight line you can draw complex regions, custom shapes, entire zones, and then track whether a person or object enters them. Right now, one side of the line is the normal area and the other side is the prohibited area. As you can see, I am standing in the normal area, so the LED is off, zero false triggering, zero noise, pure logic. But the moment I step into the prohibited area, the LED turns on, and it will stay on as long as I remain inside this restricted zone. The moment I step back into the normal area, the LED switches off again. This is exactly how virtual security systems should behave. Precise, reliable, and fully customizable. So, that's all for now. Support me on Patreon for more videos. I hope you liked today's episode. Like and share this video with your friends. See you in next episode. And thanks for watching.